and welcome back to the Bike Channel Show. This week it's episode two. We made it for our first show last week and thanks to everyone who got in touch with some constructive criticism, feedback and suggestions for what we can incorporate into the show from now on. Yeah, thanks to all of those that have liked the Bike Channel Facebook page and are following us on Twitter. And to the guy who said I look like Bruce Forsyth's love child, I'm taking it on the chin. <laughs> yeah. Coming up on this week's show, we chat to the newly crowned British Superbike champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Tommy Hill. And just because it's got the same name, I'll be doing a review on the Tommy 125 as a little tribute. And if that wasn't enough, we head into Leicester Square in London for the world premiere of the brand new film Fastest, which is all about last season's MotoGP. Okay, so first I just want to address a very serious matter which has come to my attention. We did not colour coordinate our mugs with our outfits today, even though I know it looks like we have. Actually, I did. Uh, I think it could be the massive new fashion statement for 2012. Mugs and t-shirts. You heard it first. You're such a weirdo, Lou. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, listen, <laughs> massive news. I know, Ducati, they've announced a baby brother for the Street Fighter family. This bike looks like it could be spectacular on paper. It seems to have everything. Pace, power, torque, handling. But we won't know until we get to ride one. Obviously, they're not coming over to the UK for quite a while, but Simon from Fast Bikes went out to the launch in Italy to put the bike for its paces. Hi Bike Channel, I'm Simon from Fast Bikes Magazine and we're in Modena in Italy testing the new Street Fighter 848. This is a smaller bike than the Street Fighter that we all know and kind of love, though we're a bit in fear of it. They're using the motor from the 848 Superbike, which means that it's less power but still plenty of it and lots of torque too. The original Street Fighter, the 1098 motor, and it's absolutely rabid, but with a smaller engine it should suit a lot more people. There's changes to the chassis, to the brakes, to the suspension, to the wheels, to the rubber. So there's lots of things that we're going to test on this bike uh, and we'll be doing it at this new modern track which is two miles of absolute insanity and then we'll be out off on the road as well so join us later. That's the end of the first session and I've just wiped my sweaty brow because it's uh, action packed out there. But the new Ducati Street Fighter 848 really coped with this track. It's two miles long and there's 11 or 12 corners in it but it's just corner after corner after corner and so many bikes would struggle. And one bike that would struggle would be the original Street Fighter. But in this new 848 guys it seems to really enjoy cornering. Uh, you can slam it in really hard and it'll go and it'll grip and come out the corner, it just goes where you want it to. The brakes are impressive, the ergonomics aren't that sporty but they just feel right for the bike. So for a first session that's, uh, that's pretty amazing stuff. More later.
Well, that was a rather special day. Um, all made possible thanks to the new Ducati Street Fighter 848. We spent the morning on track, and though it's an incredibly tight and twisty track, the Street Fighter 848 came out with its head held high. Its new suspension had been reset for the track, and that helped it an awful lot. But what it is struggling on is a bit of ground clearance. They'd stuck sticky super Corsa tyres on, uh, so that obviously didn't help there. But I don't know how often this bike is going to venture out on track. So the track was great, and then almost the next best thing of this launch was uh, we were invited to the Ducati MotoGP hospitality unit. So we were eating where Rossi and Hayden and Jerry Burgess and all of that lot eat, and all the, all the guests, and it's, if you ever get a chance, do it. After that, we let Din Din's go down and then went out on the road. And while the bike is amazing on track and really good fun, it, it comes alive out on the road. It's such a balanced bike. Uh, the motor is perfectly proportioned for the tasks that it's going to undertake. The suspension has been backed off because we uh, stiffened it for the road and it suited it really well. It's soft, but there's lots of support there. The brakes are great. The ergonomics are really nice. Um, you just feel you can put it wherever you want and these were difficult roads to ride on and if I was to sum it up I'd say that this bike is an absolute belter um, it's £10,000 which is probably going to be a stumbling block for quite a few people but if you can afford it then this bike is going to reward that investment lots of times over you'll love it Booyah! How good did that mic sound look? And according to Simon Handel, man, I'm very, very jealous that I wasn't invited I know, to assess I, that. I totally agree, but £10,000, that's an awful lot of money. It's really tricky, I suppose. Look at its comparisons to its rivals. Yeah, you know, if you look at the 600 range around there, Super Sport 675R, Z750R, you know, those bikes coming at around just over seven grand. And let's be honest, you know, you could go bigger if you wanted. I know, you know, you can get a litre naked sports bike for a grand cheaper. Yeah, band CB1000, RZ Thou, uh, they all come in at around £9,000. So it's a lot of money, but it does look like they've got the balance really, really perfect between power, handling, torque. Pretty much just the most amazing road going chassis you'll see. All according to Simon, obviously. I'll wait till I get my hands on that to test it on these UK roads. I know, you can't wait, can you? I'm so excited, silly. The thing I love about Ducatis as well is that they say a Ducati owner treats their Ducati like a member of the family and not just a motorcycle. And I can imagine you doing that, you know, stroking it and having it around the dinner table. Waking up in bed next to it. Is that what you're trying to insinuate? Yeah, that I don't see meet normal women and just sleep with motorbikes. It's not true. Um, although I would treat it better than any member of my family, just not as well as my dog. There's a hierarchy in the Wilkins <laughs> household. But um, yeah, £10,000 is a lot of money, but I think that Ducati passion will shine through and it looks like they've produced an amazing machine. So anyway, me and Luke had a very special premiere to attend in London. We got all dressed up. Take Oops. a look at this. Yeah. This evening, Luke and I are dressed to impress because we're at the Empire in Leicester Square for the premiere of Fastest. But yeah, we're here not only to check out one of, well, the bike racing world's biggest films ever, but also to chat to a lot of the guests and the stars that will be coming here, lining up on the red carpet to pop in and see two and a half hours of what can be described as biking pornography. Right, it's amazing you find at these premieres. The one, the only Cal Crutch. How are you doing, buddy? You all right? How are you? Well, yeah, I'm very good, mate. It's, good. Uh, must be nice you have a bit of time off and come here and relax at a lovely occasion with some of the monster girls in the background just there. Yeah, normally, you know, I've got a, I've got a girlfriend that hates the cinema, so it's nice to be able to come out and actually watch a movie. Uh, she's here. I managed to get her along, so uh, no, it's uh, it's good fun. It's nice to nice to come to to London and. Uh, and the premiere be in London. Um, you know, this this movie fastest I think is going to be fantastic. You know, I've seen uh, I've seen a few snippets here and there, and obviously I did a little bit for it. And uh, no, there's no reason why it shouldn't be a good show. Making very few mistakes is one of the defining qualities of a champion. In two of his championship winning years, Rossi finished every single race, and in the others, he never crashed out more than twice. Right then, I managed to get my hands on uh, quite literally Eugene Levertine here, buddy. Now I've been impressed. We've had Bradley Smith in the monster hat, we had Cal Crutchlow in the monster waistcoat, and you've got your very subtle little monster yeah. zipper on the jacket there. Check that out, mate. Um, how are you, fella, first start? Good, good. I'm all looking forward to the last few races. We're heading to Imola this weekend, but excited to be here for the premiere of Fastest. Really looking forward to it. How many more races? How many more championships can he win? Is he the greatest of all time? Time will tell. 
Ciao to everybody from, uh, from Valentino and uh, I'm very happy to introduce the, the premiere of uh, Fastest. Unfortunately, I'm not, uh, I'm not with you because I'm still in Spain working on the new Ducati for the 2012, but I'm sure that also without me you will enjoy a lot of the movie because uh, it's very give uh, a great emotion, especially the first part with uh, all the story of uh, the last lap and the battle in uh, in Barcelona is great. Uh, so uh, enjoy enjoy the movie. Try to to under, understand and feel the taste of uh, MotoGP and uh, see you very soon. Ciao. Motorsport is supposed to be dangerous but not too dangerous. It's a bit of a tight road, really. And you'd have to say that the improvement in safety over the last 20 years of motorbike racing has been absolutely fantastic. Right then, so we've just seen Fastest, the movie premiere, and I've got Nevesy here from MCN. Mate, there is no one better to comment on that film than you. What do you think of it? It's fantastic. Yeah. The best thing about it was it was long. <laughs> you know, you, you, you just don't get an opportunity to see footage like that, behind the scenes footage like that of MotoGP, and to see it in a cinema with the great sound and a massive screen. And just when you think you've had enough, they keep giving you more and more and more, so it's incredible. I love it. Anthony, what did you think about the movie? Brilliant, absolutely loved it. Fantastic insight into the season. Uh, great piece of history of both Lorenzo and uh, Valentino and kind of the way that they've come up through the ranks. Just a brilliant insight. Now, one word each, what did you think of the film? Fantastic. Pretty awesome. That's two. <laughs> Inspiring. Madness. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, you need my word. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Stay hungry, stay focused, stay alive. <laughs> and win again and again and again. Then you may be the one, the legend, the fastest motorcycle racer who ever lived. Do you know what? Just a little word of advice. Never, ever go to the cinema with this guy because he was sat next to me doing that the whole way through the film. And, you know, Ewan McGregor was narrating the whole thing. You know, I knew what was going on. I didn't need you there as well in my ear, the whole film. <laughs> Look, he's going to drop the bike. Oh, this is where he has a really nasty crash. Oh, this is where he wins on the last corner. So oh, I'm sorry. I've ruined the whole film for you. Um, <laughs> but hopefully you got some enjoyment out of it. I thought it was wicked. Yeah, it's fantastic. And the great thing about it is, is it's brilliant for MotoGP fans, but also for those of you who aren't particularly into motorcycle racing. You know, it's still a great watch. It does give you a really, really good insight into what drives these absolute nutters on. Still what they do week in week out at 200 miles an hour on two wheels with that much of the tire in contact with the ground and uh, I thought it was a great night out as well. Yeah it was, it was fantastic. Okay so unfortunately it's time for a break but we've got one very special guest coming in after. Yeah man, Tommy Hill, newly crowned British Superbike champion will be sitting at this table and waxing lyrical with us about the season and about his plans for next year as well. Yep and I'll be doing a review on the Tommy 125, do you see what we've done I like there? what you did there eh? Do, yeah. And uh, yeah, giving you my thoughts on that. So it's a Tommy double header, hey, coming up after the break. We 
created 2,200 tonnes of dirt brought in to create an indoor off-road zone and over a thousand people, both adults and children, get their first opportunity to have an off-road experience. It's an exciting, exciting sport and people love the thrill and they love adrenaline and uh, that's why you get people coming to the show looking at their bikes. We come every year. Yeah, don't be shy, it's alright. If you're anticipating on getting onto a bike, it's well worth the trip. Dip your toe in the water and see what it feels like. Welcome back to the Bike Channel Show. It's part two now, and as promised, yes, we promised you, and we do deliver on these promises, we welcome our very special guest today, none other than the newly crowned British Superbike champion, Mr. Tommy Hill, oh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Good to have you here, mate. Congratulations to start with. Now, um, as everyone knows, you won by an absolute country mile. Um, what was it, eight laps or something like that? Five no, races that, to it go? Was, it was eight inches, actually. Eight it inches? Was, uh, it was unbelievable, what... yeah, coming down to the wire and uh, last round, last corner, last lap for uh, the British Superbike Championship. So. Uh, you know, the British Super Bike wanted a showdown, they got one at Brands Hatch. Well, this has literally been it this year. They did bring in the kind of final top six shootout, didn't they? And it was just unbelievable pressure coming into the last race, let alone the last weekend, let alone the actual shootout itself. And then last corner, 0 0.006 seconds, I believe. So it's about that, right? Yeah, six pounds per second. And uh, I think that would, uh, you know, kill my ego, definitely. I think it killed uh, Hopper's ego because, I mean, you know, to finish so close on the championship that you fought for all season, I mean, 27, 28 races, to come down to, to the line like that is just uh, pretty close. And, um, yeah, I felt, I felt for him, I felt for Hopkins, I felt for the, uh, the Crescent Suzuki team, you know, because I was in that position last course, year and yeah. come so close to the championship and uh, just missed out, as he did, you know. But literally, yeah, he just missed out. I think if, if it had a uh, longer fork trail, he may have just beat me across the line. We were saying that, go-go gadget yeah. like forks, <laughs> they kind of spring out and stuff. But, I mean, it does kind of show you that during the course of such a long season, which the British Super Bike season is, that, you know, there are days when, when you damage your shoulder or when you've had a bike go wrong and you, you've not finished a race. It must be really down um, periods, do you know yeah. what I mean? But then it goes to show that all of those races, all of those podium finishes, all of the kind of finishing in the points when you've had to start from the back of the grid makes such a difference because it was, as you say, last corner where it all came to a head. Yeah, so, uh, you know, any sport, any athlete or motorcycle rider will tell you, you know, full of ups and downs and uh, there's always these hurdles to try and get over and things in the way to try and stop you, but you're out there to try and do a job and, uh, and that's to try and win and finally get in it at the weekend. It meant a lot to me, my family, sponsors, friends, team, everyone, so... Uh, we finally got there and we all done it together. What a smile. I know, you're so happy and it is so nice to see you so happy as well. And it, you, I think you're right, you touched upon it, your team boss did actually say he had no idea what went on in that last lap because he yeah. was so busy, so crowded in there and he didn't really want to see because yeah. the whole season had boiled down to that. So uh, it must have been a pleasant surprise when he finally opened his eyes kind of from behind the sofa to see that you were there, man, on the top rung of the podium. Yeah, no, it was fantastic for Swan Yamaha and the whole team. It's their first championship and, uh, and we've done it together. Um, every team has their ups and downs for the season, you know, good times, bad times. and. From the injuries I had at the beginning of the year, you start to not doubt yourself and think this is going to be hard. You know, it may not come come true at the end of the season. It might not happen as you want it to happen. We might not win this championship, but then you get yourself fit again, strong. Come, you know, come back stronger, fighting fit and ready to rock and roll. And uh, you know, racing is ups and downs, and uh, this is a good time for us. So we'll enjoy it. So, Tommy, you actually started out racing motocross, didn't you? Yeah. Um, something which I actually did myself for a little yeah. while. What, what gave the clue away? Was it the motocross it gear It was the gear, wearing? yeah. <laughs> I was just like, um... This is just generally what I wear on oh, day-to-day basis. Down, yeah, I just rock around and cruise around. <laughs> yeah, go do my shopping. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we've uh, just been motocrossing today. So yeah. uh, I heard about Bike Channel were local, so I popped in and uh, thought I'd have a nice cup of tea with you. We love it. That's awesome. So you started out racing motocross, but when you were 14, you actually did really well as well, didn't you, in motocross? But then when you were 14, you had a really major accident, didn't yeah. you? And tell us a little bit about Yeah, what I mean, uh, back when I was 14, I'm, I'm getting a bit older now. I don't want to say how old I am. I'm almost like a veteran, but now uh, <laughs> getting a bit older. But um, yeah, it was one of those decisions that you need to make. And uh, yeah, sitting in hospital and, and the doctor saying to me, you've got 15 minutes left. Um, and that was it, you know, I had so much internal bleeding, lost my spleen, my kidney and done some damage to my lungs. So pretty bad uh, position to be in any, any rider or, or general person. So, uh, or any general person will probably pack the bags and say, yeah. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go and play chess now. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just uh, got back home, got myself sorted out and uh, we heard about a championship called the Aprilia Super Teens. And that was where I started, Casey Stoner started there, Chaz Davis and a lot of uh, young and up-and-coming riders. Um, that's where we started. and. Uh, that was my first time on the road bike, so I almost had to forget about the motocross and go to something a little bit faster. 
Yeah, I just don't understand, like mentally, how you can prepare yourself for something like that when something so bad has happened to you. I mean, I know it's nothing like even remotely similar, but I broke both you my wrists. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I broke a nail. <laughs> at the same time whilst racing motocross. And my dad was a typical motocross dad and he would not let me come off. I was like, oh! And he was like, no, you stay on that bike. That's you know, we've come a long way. That's a bit harsh, to be fair, if you've broken both your wrists and he wouldn't let you come off. It's a motocross dad, definitely. Yeah. A, you know what they're like, they're one of a kind, aren't like. they? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I had actually broken both my wrists and I just couldn't get that confidence back. How do you get the confidence back to, like you said, go into race superbikes? I think it's uh, doing what I done last weekend at Brands Act. You know, if you've if you've got a dream and you've got something that you want to fight for, I think every time you get knocked back, try and come back stronger and keep pushing. Um, yeah, so stop whinging about your busted <laughs> busted as you win. Come back stronger. Get racing. She was um, twelve. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it is. I mean, you know, certain people and uh, you know, some people would stop their career, you know, for injuries yeah. that people have. But uh, I just had a dream and. Um, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to be a British Superbike champion. So let's keep pursuing that dream, keep pushing forward, keep fighting. And uh, as I keep saying, things are there to knock you back. And I keep trying. And uh, finally, it's paid off, you know. Um, but now I've got to set another target. And uh, we'll see what happens next year. And, and just keep pushing and um, keep, uh, you know, just keep moving forward. So, what are the plans for next year? In talks at the moment, but um, I'm, I've just enjoyed the last few days being back on the motocross bike again. And um, you know, during the season, it's hard to actually get on the motocross bike and, and really enjoy it because you're riding around actually thinking, I've got a championship that I could possibly win here. <laughs> last thing I want to be doing is phoning up my team boss saying, I've got a bit of a problem, you know, I've, I've yeah. busted my wrist or I've done something. So I tried to concentrate on just my fitness side, do a lot of cycling. And um, yeah, now just uh, the phones have been going mad and uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a fantastic position. You know, from winning the British Superbike Championship, but now it's just concentrating on 2012. There are a few possibilities of World Superbike, but you know, look at British Superbike at the moment. It's almost a World Championship. You've got World Championship riders that are coming back into it. Loads of different nationalities involved. So it's uh, it's definitely an up and coming championship, and uh, I've just got to look at my career. Um, you know, in depth now. I'm going to, to speak to my sponsors, make sure they're happy with some decisions that I might make or might pursue, and uh, we'll go from there. I think, I think you've done the right thing, mate. You need to take some time off, relax, and actually enjoy. This is the problem with you racers. I know what it's like. You just want to get back out there and race yeah, again. Yeah, I'm, I'm the world's worst for relaxing. I, I never relax whether, you know, I'm, I'm working in a graphic design company, designing logos and graphics for riders or even bike channel. Um, you know, yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying, to, trying to keep busy and, uh, and, and do what I'm doing, you know. But, you know, I've got to make the right decision, right yeah. choice, and, um, you know, yeah, I might have to just turn up at the BSB meeting next year if I'm in World Superbikes and just run one that um, you know number one plate on yeah. the bike just to enjoy it for once. But yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. But I need to make the right choice, and um, if it's not in British Superbikes, hopefully it'll be in World Superbikes with a good competitive team. A man of many talents. A man of many many talents. And did you know that a Chinese company has given you the ultimate tribute by actually naming a scooter after you? Yeah. Oh really? Do you like I'll have, scooters? I'll have to talk to them about a deal for 2012. <laughs> yeah. That's a sponsor riding, deal. Riding the bike that's Named after me, Imagine taking that on the British Superbikes, a little one, two, five. But you, got, you actually it's spent great. some time on it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So from one Tommy to another, okay. take a look at the Tommy 125 by Lexmoto. Okay, so here I am doing my first review for Bike Channel. Now, obviously, I want everyone to take me seriously. So I chose a big beast of a bike to do my first bike review on. And here it is, the Lexmoto Tommy 125. a lovely evening I've come up to Epsom Downs on my Tommy which let's be honest is a bit of a Chinese ripoff of Vespers and Lambrettas but look at it 800 pounds bargain one of the main reasons that you'll buy a bike like this is because of the way it looks it's very fashionable it's very retro it's on trend in fact someone's just told me they think it looks half Harley half Vespa so what's it like to ride I hear you ask well, it's a 125 four-stroke single-cylinder engine with 11 brake horsepower, which means it's pretty quick around town, quick off the lights, and I've reached speeds of 55 miles per hour. 
Not up a hill though, just on a straight. Brakes, oh, don't find them that good to be honest, but I've only done 85 miles, so I'm still bedding them in. We'll give them a chance. I think a plus point for the Tommy is that it's great for pillions. I've actually um, had a six foot two bloke on the back of this and the handling was absolutely fine. Um, I couldn't even feel him. But the only thing is that um, when you're turning corners, the handlebars actually do hit your pillion in the knee. But you know, if they're annoying you a little bit, you've actually got to do it a little bit harder. <laughs> right, now you may have noticed that I'm a girl. Yes, I am. Uh, I carry a lot of things with me. I need a lot of storage space. And this is where the Tommy is let down a little bit. There's hardly any room. I've got my bag in here, Luke's hairbrush, which is full of hair, um, and the lock. And that's pretty much all you can get in there, so definitely a down point for me. I guess you could put a top box on the back, but um, I've been told that with the pillion backrest there, you're actually not going to be able to fit one on, so... Not very good. Now finally, it's difficult to find any differences on paper between the Tommy 125 and the Vespa LX 125, except that the Vespa is £2,000 more than the Tommy. So if you can live without the badge and the kudos of riding a Vespa, then this is fantastic value for money. And I should know, I spent £800 of my hard-earned cash on this, but will it stand the test of time? Watch this space. Look at you! Look at you and the little Tommy one too. I know. Five. Don't little I look funky happy? Helmet. I know. Yeah. Just riding around, taking in the views, having a little smile. Do you know what? I've had it a couple of months now, and the novelty does wear off slightly. Has it, has it started like falling that. apart? Or? No, it's absolutely fantastic. The only thing is that I would say is perhaps the brakes still haven't bedded in. <laughs> okay, how many months? How many miles? Still months. So I'm still waiting for that to happen. Not, not going to happen, is it? But, really? No, I don't think so. But, you know, what you get for your money, you know, just under a grand. Yeah, It's fantastic. Yeah, it is, definitely. Right, that's about all we've got time for this week, unfortunately. Another episode comes to a close. Once again, thanks to PH Motorcycles for having us uh, down here today in their showroom. Also, thanks to Tom Hill for coming on the show and being such an awesome guest, even if he didn't dress up. Yeah, he motor was gear. <laughs> what a nice guy, though. <laughs> but no, legendary. And we'll be back next week when we'll have more shenanigans for you. And don't forget, in the meantime, if you want to catch up with everything that's going on, you can simply visit facebook.com forward slash bike channel. Or for all you Twitter fans out there, at Bike Channel. And you can see everything we do in full, the news, videos, interviews, reviews, shenanigans, the whole shebang at bikechannel.com.